Okay, so welcome everyone. Um, welcome to the Catalyst School. Uh, this is a this session is about how to be a community advisor. Um, the Catalyst School is a um, is a funded proposal. Uh, so it's it's run and operated by community members. Um, so people like myself and other active people who spent time in the community and, and are willing to share their knowledge. Um, so welcome. Uh, Nadia, do you want to, uh, I'll introduce myself. I'm Phil, I've been here since uh, Fund 3. I've been funded, funded proposer in many funds, four, five, four, six, seven. Um, I've been an active CA member, a VCA. Um, I've been on the challenge teams. So I've actively participated in, in many aspects of uh, the Catless pro process. Um, I'm around if you want to ask questions at any time. I'm on the Telegram and Discord servers, so feel free to reach out and ask anything. Um, and I'll try and answer it best I can. Nadia, do you want to introduce yourself? Yes, hi everyone. Uh, my name is Nadia Hopkins and I am the uh, circle rep for the Community Advisors and Veteran Community Advisors group. And I'm um, here today just to support the process of helping each of you better understand how to be a community advisor. And uh, from here also, same as Phil, available for any kind of support or um, maybe additional uh, insights that might be helpful to you as you take this path. Fantastic. Um, you guys can all see the screen. Yep. Yes, fantastic. Um, so the Catalyst School runs various workshops. So if you're interested in other parts of Catalyst, um, such as making proposal at some point or a VCA process, if you if you get uh, recruited to do that process, um, as well as introduction to Catalyst, there's a whole bunch of workshops. Uh, there's also available one-on-one -on -one sessions, uh, again, funded by the community. So. Um, if you do want to have a, a more in-depth uh, walk through various processes or question and answer session that's that's more private, um, you can reach out to the Catalyst School and they can arrange that for you. Uh, so again, welcome to the newcomers that are coming in. There's a bunch of communication channels. Um, I'll leave them up for a second so you can make notes. Um, Maybe uh, towards the end, I'll also share the slides so that you'll have them if you wish to follow them later. Um, but they're on uh, all the communication channels that are, that are useful. So there's a website, um, Discord, Telegram, and, and Twitter. So we'll just quickly go through the phases of Catalyst. Um, we start off with a, a little known and, and not so well used sometimes, but very useful uh, insight stage, which is how the uh, fund starts. This is an opportunity for the community to engage with the actual base layer of, of Catalyst. So identifying problems and needs uh, that can be used to improve the whole process. So um, that happens for a week before the proposal stage. Um, then we enter the proposal stage. Um, usually it's split into three sections, um, but the three sections this time was uh, compiled into one section. So usually there's a one week process of submitting a, a proposal and then two weeks to refine and finalize that proposal with no new submissions. But I think this time uh, we decided to experiment with expanding that so that people could submit proposals across the three weeks. Um, I think given the size of the fund, which is a $16 million fund, um, it, it was decided that the, uh, the one week time frame might not be enough to collect uh, enough proposals to, to, fill the, to fill the ranks of the proposers. Um, after that stage, so we are now entering the final stage of proposal writing um, that ends tomorrow in about 30 hours or so. Um, there'll be a few days of compiling that data and getting it ready for the QA stage. Um, and that's when we as CAs come in. Um, the CA stage is a part of the quality assurance stage. Um, 
the purpose of this is to uh, ensure that the proposals that have been submitted um, are, are of a good quality um, and, and that voters get a, a voting on, on proposals that are, that are valid for the, for the process. Um, after that, there's a, a review by the proposal stage. This was added um, at quite a few funds ago, but it wasn't there originally. But basically, um, proposers didn't have a right of reply when this process started. So this, the review by the proposers gives the proposer an opportunity to identify any um, assessments made by CAs that they feel are unfair or invalid um, for various reasons. And that gives them an opportunity to flag that and, and write their rationale for flagging it. Um, and then after that, this, the VCAs, commonly known as veteran community advisors, they're people who have assessed proposals in previous funds successfully. Um, they have the opportunity to review uh, the flags that the proposals have made and the assessments made by CAs, by, by ourselves. Um, they will then rank them. I mean, we'll, we'll get to this in a second, so. <laughs> um, but they will rank them uh, good, excellent, or to be filtered out. So generally filtered out means that the, that the assessment is completely garbage, not well written, like not well written, but like randomly written or, or something like that. So it, it doesn't follow the guidelines basically. And then finally, all this goes to the voters, um, and that's what we're here for, to, to um, vote on proposals to see how we can improve, uh, grow, and add value to the Cardano ecosystem. So, um, I'm guessing, yeah, okay. I'm guessing most of you know what uh, Catalyst is if you're, if you're applying to be a CA, but um, in case you're not sure before we get to this, um, project Catalyst is sort of the venture capital wing of, of the Cardano project. It's funded by uh, Cardano holders through transaction fees. Um, a small amount of the transaction fees are taken into a treasury, and that treasury is made available through the project Catalyst to fund projects that bring value um, uh, and improvements to the Cardano ecosystem. Okay, so... Uh, do you have anything to say about what I've said, Nadia, at all? Anything to add? Yeah, just that this is this is a really important role that you're thinking about taking on. It 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 fills a very uh, special purpose, and Phil's going to get into that. But um, it will be it will be really nice for you to go through this process because I think as you go through this process, you uh, are able to understand how the the overall flow of how things happen through a fund and it really is um it really is a key a key part of the whole process so um it's good that you're all here and make sure to ask a lot of questions as, as we go along because uh there there's a lot to understand but also the doing of it is going to help make it a lot clearer as well absolutely and quite often a question asked by one is is on the mind of others so feel free to ask anything there's no silly questions go ahead art you uh, sorry Nadia, go Art, do you want to go ahead? You got a question there? Sure. Uh, yeah. So my my question was with this with respect to the insight stage is uh, just to have an idea of what that is actually is. Is it the community that engages with the the, the catalyst team to kind of give their insights into how things are working or they're addressing surfacing problems, or is it the catalyst community itself kind of internally looking at uh, how they want to to handle a, a given round? I wasn't sure. But both essentially, it's about flagging and, and identifying issues and, and problems with the system for the community and for the the IOG uh, core catalyst people. So they they will review them all, but the community also engages with this process. Like it's IOG is a member of the community that there's no overarching that they are the stewards of this process at the moment. But it's important to remember that they are just a member of the community as well. They're an important member, they're a big member, but they are just a member of the community. Got it, thank you. Karim? I'll yeah. work on handling the chat questions here, Phil. Okay, thank you. Karim? Hi guys, uh, Karim here from Dubai. I'm a proposer for the first time and I'm also re registered to be a community advisor. 
And I have a quick question, uh, Phil, Nadia. Uh, the, so obviously as a proposer, I realized that we extended the deadline to March 17th. And my understanding was that we did that to allow people to continue to submit new ideas. But did, uh, did we extend the other processes or did we just merge the three? We just merged the three. So the deadline was always the 17th. Um, okay. That was the final, the finalization date that there's a point in time on the 17th that, that proposals, you can no longer edit or submit proposals. The bit that was extended is the submission time. Usually there was a cutoff after a week okay. that was extended across the entire process. So I, I think it's, I think it was a bit, it was, so I obviously from, from a fund proposer, I can just give you some feedback. Uh, it was a bit misleading because um, not so much, not, not being able to get so much feedback. So I've, I've obviously uh, gotten some feedback from, from the team that uh, we're proposing and also some of the people on uh, that I know in the community, but I feel like um, it wasn't clear. So um yeah maybe the timelines need to be clarified um i think for, uh, next time maybe just to be a bit more clear maybe there's there's um or maybe it's just me um and, and maybe phil you can just uh just t take us through the steps so now that so tomorrow is the final day for submitting a new idea yes what what else are we not able to do because as we get feedback now we're able to review nonetheless right so as we give feedback to people to on on proposals uh, they're able to modify the proposal no so we we're, we're now entering the quality assurance stage and being okay. a ca is a member of that quality assurance yes so i understand that it's about checking and feed, feeding back to the proposers but the the idea, the system as intended is that if you've written a proposal that doesn't get funded this round, the next fund's only three months away. So we like, it would be great to have some sort of continual process and people are thinking and working on solutions for that, but we, we exist in the solution that we have at the moment. And, and that requires a deadline and a cutoff date so that we can start the next process. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm super clear on that. I, I, I think, I think that, the confusion from my side as a fund proposer uh, is that the I would have had I would have had the opportunity to based on the feedback that I was going to get uh, update and make changes. But now I'm clear that actually nothing changes. As of tomorrow, we cannot make any edits, That's and now true. we're just going to communicate back and forth the, the the communication back and forth between the fund proposer and the community advisors is just going to happen in the comment section there's an opportunity to back and forth but that's it i'll go through this in a second but the, the ca process isn't done in the comment comment section okay sorry i mean that's okay uh, but the comment section has been open and in fact if you do wish this is to everyone here if you do wish to participate as a ca in the future please go and engage like we have a proposer here that would love feedback during the process so it's not required of a CA, but as a knowledgeable person, as you get more and more into this community, proposers love feedback because it helps them improve their proposal and it helps them have a better chance of being funded and it helps the whole community lead towards better improvements for Cardano. So as CAs, highly encouraged to participate. It is in the CA guidelines, if you read through it, that it's highly encouraged to participate with proposers before the CA set, uh, timing. But at the moment we do operate in these uh, distinct time times when, st when a state is changed. So the state will change from the proposal state to the CA, to the QA state. And, and at that point, proposers no longer have the opportunity. There's a lot to learn. There's a lot to understand from various aspects of, especially if you're taking on various roles here. So sorry if that hasn't been communicated well, um, but that's the, that's the environment we're in. It's, 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 it's a learning process and, uh, no worries. Uh, I've been lucky that, so now I'm speaking as a proposer, I've had the chance to refine, refine, refine with feedback. And, uh, now I understand as of tomorrow, my proposal is final. Yes. Yes. So make sure you do all your finalizations now and, and put all the 
bits and pieces on and try to get a bit more feedback tomorrow. You still have 24 hours or a bit more. So. I'll, I'll post the link to it in case any of you guys are interested in. <laughs> I'm also a proposer with quite a few proposals in this fund. So it, it's, it's a hectic time for a lot of us. Um, cool. Okay, I'll, I'll continue on with the slides here. So um, as a community advisor or a CA, um, we, our primary role is to assess proposals. Um, our secondary role is to provide feedback to the proposers. So we can do that pre-close, but we can also do that in our assessments. So part of writing a good assessment especially if the proposal is a little bit lacking in some areas, it's, it's good to participate and assist that proposal as if they're going to submit it again in the future and give them some feedback about how they might choose to improve or change things inside your assessment. And that can be quite helpful. Um, and this is the QA stage from the CA point of view is that we provide a, a rating, um, a star rating, one to five um, being low to high or, or whatever version you wanna talk about that. Um, if in case anyone hasn't signed up to be a CA yet, um, you need to go to cardano.ideascale.catalyst, uh, Cardano um, which is this website here. Um, and if you have, not signed up or haven't logged in since the CA phase opened, it will provide you with a pop-up window that gives you the opportunity um, to, to sign up as a CA. So if you wanna be a CA, you need to do that process um, in order to be one. Ideally uh, before tomorrow, like uh, in the next 24 hours, but I believe, and I'm not 100% on this, um, that the process is gonna be open through the whole assess stage. Do, do you know if that's correct, Nadi? The registration is open until the 23rd, so next okay. Wednesday. Okay, yep. So um, it used to close at the, it used to close at the same time proposals closed, but in order to keep the, the window open and, and gather more CAs, uh, it's open to the 23rd. So do keep it that in mind. If you want to participate, go to the website um, provided there. Um, maybe you can share that in the in the um, chat, Nadia. Okay, so um, uh, CAs are designed to be anonymous. Um, it, that in that way, uh, we're not uh, open to attack, and we're free to participate. Um, within our conscience, basically. Um, and that, that's the decision that was made early on when this process was being developed, that they will be anonymous. Um, it's, it's not entirely anonymous. Um, IO does keep a record um, and, and uh, your, your participation is recorded internally by them as the stewards of the system. Um, so do keep that in mind that um, it is checked and uh, your participation over time can be uh, analyzed if uh, analyzed for ill will in case that's happening. So just keep that in mind. Um, most people who are attending this session probably aren't intending to participate poorly, but um, it is done that way. Uh, during the stage, uh, you don't talk to other CAs about your assessments. You do them in isolation um, and they can't be seen by others. This is to help uh, avoid bias. Um, oops. Uh, so, lost my train of thought. I had a point that I was going to make. Um, do you want to say anything about that, Nadia? No. So we have a, a few questions here about the form populating, and um, my suggestion is if you if you have if you've made an idea scale account prior, but you haven't logged in, the, the form only populates as of um, the 11th when registration opens. So um, just log back, take, take a second and log back in there. It will automatically pop up and uh, you should be able to fill that out. And if you need help with this, just let us know in the chat and, and we'll get you some help. There's, there's no need to worry about it. We'll make sure that you're, that you're set up so that you're um, 
able to go on assessing. Don't want you to feel um, distracted for the other things that Phil is. There is also um, a way to check to see if you are. Yeah, great point. I will I'll load up so you can see, hopefully, um, I'll probably need to answer a catcher. I don't know. Yeah. Um, so if you're confused about it, this is the, what Phil's about to show you here is the way that you check if you have registered for this to be a CA in this fund or not. That's what you're about to look at here. Yes. So you go to the website and you get this page. You click on your um, name up here and you click um, this. And then on the right hand side over here um, will be the details. <laughs> will be the details of whether you are. So if you've answered yes here in profile details, then you are currently registered as a, as a, to be a CA. And what will happen then is when the process begins, an email will go out to you. Okay. Um, I've already covered off on this. Um, so we'll, we can skip through that, but that's the URL there. Um, okay, so how do we actually assess um, a proposal? So there's there's three aspects that have that have to be covered in a according to the um, guidelines of the. Um, sorry, just one second. Okay, um, we are looking at the the impact um, of a proposal. So that's the impact on the Cardano ecosystem. Um, and, and that's that's in uh, reference to the actual um, challenge. So if we go, I'll quickly go back to this. Um, inside a scale platform, uh, there is a list of the campaigns of, of the challenges. So, um, these are the individual challenges, and each challenge has um, a set of goals and a, and a purpose for existing. Um, and you can read about that here by going, it brings you to here, but then you've got to click about, and it will tell you the challenge brief um, and um, various other aspects like the KPIs and things like that. So when you're assessing, you go and read the proposal and you read the challenge associated with that proposal and you work out how the how how impactful according to that challenge that project is so that's what you're assessing in relation to impact um, feasibility that's whether um, enough budget is assigned uh, whether the proposer knows the team that is needed, required to do it, whether they have the experience to do it. Um, keep in mind that the process as intended doesn't mean that the proposer needs to be the implementer. Um, currently, the system is uh, very much aligned with the proposer being the implementer, but I think the system as intended is that some people are creative and come up with good ideas but may not be very good at managing managing teams. Um, so the idea behind that would be that a proposer, as long as they can identify the team members are needed and, and know something about that or have reached out and added additional team members to their team that fulfill those needs or know that they need to find those when funding comes and know the costs of that and know the implications of having those members on the team. So that's the feasibility. And then the clarity and audibility is uh, a, rate, a rating about how clear the proposal is so that's not just garbled nonsense. And to make sure that there's actually a, uh, that the proposer has recognized that, that there's uh, a quantifiable means of checking that the proposal uh, is fulfilling on its needs. Um, we call them key performance indicators, um, KPIs. And they're designed to, to, to be able to check um, and track the project as, as it goes through its, its phase of being implemented and to completion. Um, <clears throat> each so one of the- Is there a request, Phil, to share the slides? Would you be able to put that uh, on? Yes, is it not sharing? Uh, yes, 
I, I can share the, the link. The link to it. Sorry, in the chat. Yeah, I can do that. Um, put that in the chat. There we go. Um, Thanks. Um, each assessment, as I said previously, you're giving a score one to five stars. Um, and I'll go through the process a little bit better shortly. Um, but it's also important that you're giving an explanation uh, or a rationale for your score. So it's not good enough just to just to give it one or two or five stars and say good or no good. It's about really understanding and, and being able to justify that score that you've given, explaining in detail. And that's the opportunity that you've got to give feedback back to the proposer. So they can say, oh, I've got only two stars. And, and this is the reason that this, this assessor said this. And, oh, I got five stars. Oh, I did well here. If I need to resubmit, I'll, I'll, I can resubmit without bothering to change that section. <clears throat> there is a community um, assessment guide um, that's written in consultation with the community and developed over time by community members um, and currently again stewarded by IOG. That will be uh, provided or maybe already has been provided, I think in the link um, to a live version of it. And when, when you get the final uh, URSCA email, that'll include the, the guidelines. So do read over the guidelines <clears throat> and that, that's what you'll be assessing um, according to. Um, I will go through- It might be nice here, Phil, also to just re reinforce, if anyone's a returning CA, uh, it's very important that you really read the guide. It's very important every fund that you read the guide because it does get updated. So I think it's really positive to emphasize here that you wanna take a look at this particularly um prior to prior to starting off this time because there are some some new things and some adjustments in there which should be helpful to you um sorry <clears throat> that's okay fantastic um currently all assessments need to be done in the idea scale platform um when you go i hope you can still see my screen when you go to a when the when it changes to the assess stage. So we, if you look at the stages here, we're in the finalized stage. When it changes to assess stage, if you are a CA, you'll get a button here. And I believe at the bottom or somewhere the the UI is not the best, but there'll be an assess button, I believe here, that will pop open the assessment window. Uh, you you're required to submit all assessments in idea scale platform okay do keep that in mind that all assessments are there but i'm actually involved with the uh, with a community made tool that we developed some time ago because of the uh, lackluster version of uh, assessments done in, in idea scale uh, the url i've shared in the chat um, it is called the uh, the CA tool. Um, and what this allows us to do is to actually um, look at and review assessments inside this tool. But keep in mind that you need to, if you use this tool, you need to copy them from here into IdeaScale. But this helps you manage your processes and, and um, gives you a good understanding. So if we look here, I'll just take you through, these are fund seven stats at the moment. Um, but uh, part of the advantage of this is that we want to try and get at least three, ideally five or more assessments per, um, per project, relevant assessments. This tool allows us to actually find that information out. It's not readily available in, in, in any other way. It used to be announced through a spreadsheet, which was one of the reasons why this tool got developed. So what this does is it actually gives us uh, it shows us, according to the uh, um, filters that we put on up here, so you can choose the specific, you can either go to all or you can go to a specific challenge that you want to assess. Um, and it, it will present you with the lowest um, number of assessments. So if we go suggest another one, uh, it, this number will keep rising up 
because these have had more assessments than the others. So you can use this tool to find low assessment, uh, low assessed projects, one to help the community make sure that enough assessments are done and two to focus your attention on low assessment um, places. Does that make sense to everyone? Yeah? Okay. So the tool is optional. Um, you can work out your own systems. This is, this is a community-made tool. It is a funded project that I'm working on myself. Um, uh, so, but please feel free to use it. Um, there's some interface up here. If you click on my assessments, it actually brings up um, your assessments, which is if you're not using the tool, I highly recommend that you keep a similar list on a spreadsheet or something because it's not easy in idea scale to find your assessments. At least it hasn't been in the past. So I'll just quickly crack open this assessment here. Um, obviously this was a test assessment that I did. Um, and here you, you can change your star rating and you can write up a, a, a rationale for that star rating. So that's kind of the process that you're looking for. Um, because I said that you have to put it into IDISCO, you can click this copy button or you can click select all copy and then you need to paste it into IDISCO. I just need to make sure that that's absolutely clear assessments need to be done in idea scale hopefully one day they won't be needed and we can just do it straight from tools like this but that's not where the process is at the moment um, we've also added in the interface these guiding questions that can help you um, uh, with your assessment you don't need to use these they're just helpful um, places to to work with so that that's the tool um, There'll probably be more sessions in the future of going through that tool when the process actually opens. If you're interested, I believe that will happen. Um, okay. So this is just reiteration of what I said before. I'll leave that open for a second. Um, so you can kind of look at how that, how those three areas work. Um, and while you're looking at them, is there any questions about where we are to at this point? No, okay. So the, these are the assessment criteria, the three areas. Um, this is the reward structures now. Um, so this being a community advisor um, is I believe part of the concept that Charles has talked about of the middlemen of value or the middle people of value. Um, the idea that it's, it's very difficult for a voter, especially as the funds grow to uh, explore and understand all the voting all the proposals that are um in presented to them i mean there's 1400 uh, it's probably going to shrink down over over the next time but let's say there's about a thousand proposals there's going to be very few voters that have the opportunity to explore all those so part of what we're doing um, is informing voters um, so it's recognized as a, as a valuable position in the community. And as a result, some of the funds from each process, uh, from each fund are assigned to the community advisors to get this job done. Um, in this fund, it's 640,000 to be split across the, the CA participants. Um, during the VCA process, VCA's role is to uh, review those assessments that we're submitting and give them a mark, excellent, good, or uh, indicate that they're not in line with the guidelines that we mentioned earlier um, and will be filtered out. In the event of being filtered out, um, your uh, assessment won't be presented to the voters and you won't be eligible for rewards. And if uh, you, you um, have a lot filtered out, then you won't be eligible to be a CA in the future. Um, in order to uh, distribute the work, uh, there are three um, good assessments rewarded. There are two excellent assessment rewarders. I'll get to the next slide. It's a bit complicated and it's a little bit, um, uh, it needs a bit of explanation, but it's not, yeah, I'll, I'll get to it in a second. Um, Yeah, hang on, we'll go here. So, uh, 
here we have what happens with the VCAs, which I've also mentioned previously. Um, yes, should have been assessments reviewed. So when you're a CA, um, keep in mind your a few things about what you're doing. Um, one, your your competency in in the area of assessment. So just be, uh, it's better to stay in your area of expertise and assess in that. It's going to be providing more value. But if you're a generalist, you can also add value and you can assess whether something's feasible, whether it's something's clear, whether it's auditable, and you might not be able to assess the technicalities of the pro of the um, of the project. Keep that in mind and mention that if you are choosing to assess in that manner. Um, it, it is an open process. You can choose which pro projects you choose to assess. Um, but some projects are quite technical in nature. So if you're not, if you don't have the technical expertise, don't try to uh, assess a technical project for its technical implementations. Um, just some notes on, on how other CAs have talked about how they've been successful in the past for the actual process. Um, some, some successful CAs choose a particular uh, number of um, challenges. So, and, and look to assess a large, like stay in that uh, challenge, either to complete it or only assess it or a number of challenges rather than going across all challenges. The advantage of doing this is that you can actually then get a feel for where each proposal sits in relation to each other. Um, so that's kind of an advantage. It's not the way I've seen aid in the past, but I think it's the way I will see aid this fund. Um, I, I've in the past just wanted to find out more about different projects and just hit a random, give me a random one to assess. Um, and that's the way I've operated. But I believe this fund, I will pick a few challenges and stay in those challenges. Um, Yes. Anything to say there, Nadi? Yeah, I agree. That's how I approached it the first time too, and it was a little bit like uh, it was a little bit like a prize every time. You know, you, you you do get a really wonderful walk around the community, and that's I think a, a, a benefit to us as CAs that we get to really see the creativity and the ingenuity and the effort that people are putting out. So it's a very positive. Uh, experience to do it that way. If you do it that it, either way, if you approach it by choosing a challenge or if you approach it in a sort of more popcorn style, it's very important that you understand the challenge itself before you think about the proposal. So that can't really be reinforced enough. You need to have a sense of what the challenge is asking for to be able to assess the impact well. So make sure that regardless of how you approach that you take some extra time to just look at the challenge that the proposal is towards and think about that thoroughly in in beginning your assessment. And I think that's another argument for staying in a challenge. So you can basically read that challenge once and then start assessing against it. Um, whereas I spent a lot of time reading challenges in the past. Um, okay, so. Uh, okay. Uh, sorry. Okay, that's kind of that is there anything i think there's some technical details about the what has been removed it's been removed um the just to go back to the the way this works um it's it's a little bit complicated the the mechanism for a reward i'll go into it a little bit i can't say that I fully understand it exactly. It was it was part of a research um, exercise that IOG did. So it has a large paper associated with it. So if you are interested, you can probably find that somewhere. But basically the way it works is that as the VCAs rank the CAs participation excellent, good or filtered out, uh, there will be a maximum of three good assessments uh, um, in, rewarded, a maximum of two excellent assessments are rewarded. But if there's no excellence, then the number of good assessments will receive more. 
So there might be five rewarded good assessments. Um, and if there's not enough good assessments, then I believe there's more excellent assessments are rewarded. So it, it kind of balances itself out depending on the situation at hand. Part of this is to help the community so that if you go and see that there's somebody, there's a proposal that's got 20 assessments that say, it's designed to then focus your attention on a lower assessment so that we can spread those assessments across all proposals. So keep that in mind when you're working through that uh, the lower the lower the assessment, the more likely you are to be rewarded for, for participating in that. But of course, other people will do the same. So it, it, it equalizes itself out over time. So it's quite a clever mechanism. Um, but the main thing is, is if you if you operate as intended as a CA, don't worry too much about the rewards. Every time I've operated as a CA, either doing a lot of assessments or a few, uh, I've been rewarded for it. So uh, you're highly likely as a participating CA that engages as intended to get a reward for, for, for doing that. Um, there is a lottery system if you do, if let's say there's 10 good assessments, then those 10 go into a lottery and uh, a, a winner of that lottery, three winners of that lottery are selected from the 10. That's how that works. Um, as I said, the mechanism's there, it's sophisticated, it's a little hard to explain, but participate and you'll get rewards. Um, Nadia, anything to add to? Any I, just put, I just put the document that Phil referenced in there. So this is the explanation of CA rewards. You know, you could, it's very, uh, you could like, it's not beach reading. So you could, you could get into it and, and really understand it. There's the, the explanation of how it's, of how it's done. But I think this slide is pretty comprehensive, but in case someone wanted a little bit of um, back details, yeah, it's in there. Um, there is a question, Phil, from Jean, and I think it's a good question to have in the, in the um, workshop overall, especially in the recording is, could we open a proposal and idea scale and show how someone would find the challenge that the proposal is in? Uh, yes, yes, I can do that. So when I when I went to the main page, I'm going to get to checked. One second, you guys can all prove that I'm human now as well. <laughs> Or a very good bot and we'll work it out okay so when you, when you get to the landing page there's a few i mean i don't like the navigation of this they haven't really thought about it but you come to here you get the challenges these are all the challenges each one of these is a separate challenge um i will also mention something in a minute if i forget please remind me about the uh this one the fun nine can you remind me if i if yes. i forget okay um so each one of these is a challenge. Let's uh, choose East Asia Grow Cardano, for instance. Um, this then brings up the various uh, um, projects in, in, in this challenge. So the challenge information is here in the about, and the ideas are here if you're choosing to go this way. If you use the tool, um, then there is a link. You can open the challenge brief up here, or you can go go to the proposal here. So that'll link you through to the brief and to the proposal from the tool. Um, I do need to mention that uh, if you're in the situation like Karim is, um, and you're a proposal, if you're a proposer, please bear in mind that you're not to uh, do assessments in your um, challenge. Yeah, that's again to, to avoid um, bias. So if you're involved with any proposals in any way, uh, beyond just community engagement and, and helping people out and, and giving feedback, if you're actually involved with the proposal and have a financial interest, um, please preclude yourself from that whole challenge. Um, and obviously don't don't assess your own proposals and that sort of stuff, but yeah, don't don't be in the same same challenge there. Um, does that answer the question? 
Yeah, and maybe uh, go back to the fun nine, the challenge setting. Yes. Um, everything in Catalyst, as of a few funds ago, although I think Idea Scale does put some in, every one of these challenges has actually been voted on by the community in previous challenges. So the, the way Catalyst operates um, now is that these are, these are community submitted, in some ways community organized and managed um, challenges within the system. And how do we enter those? Each fund, there's a new, so in this one, it's a fund eight, fund nine challenge setting. In fund nine, it will be a fund nine, fund, chan, fund 10 challenge setting. So each fund where we as a community get to uh, engage and submit the challenges and the focuses of Catalyst for the next fund. It's a very cool sort of uh, way this operates. Um, so what happens in here, these are, these are assessed slightly differently. Um, I can't remember the exact terminology that we use to assess these, but they're not assessed according to the um, those three that we that I mentioned before, which was um, impact, feasibility, and auditability. So keep that in mind that if you do choose to um, assess inside the challenge setting, you're going to be doing it in a slightly different way. And the reason for that is that these um, these are not actually funded proposals. These are broad categories for the next fund to have funded proposals in them. So there, there is a difference. So you'll, you'll see some of the um, existing uh, challenges reappearing quite often. Um, for instance, these this one here, the Grow, Af Grow Africa, Grow Cardano has been around for quite some time. Um, and the way this then works is that the, it's kind of working towards the concept of, of, of governance and uh, community governance because the community is deciding direction, the community is devoting on direction, and then the community is managing the direction. Um, so if you do see next fund and you don't want to put a funded proposal in, consider putting through proposals for the future direction of Cardano, of Catalyst. Um, yeah, so keep that in mind. I think they will have uh yeah that they are slightly different so it might be an idea to focus in of those if you if you're interested and then that will help you understand the future direction of of um of the project as well okay. when you when you look at the guide maybe it's nice to point out extra because i think this is easy forget to forget since you know we, we all have sort of a sense of star ratings one to five star but in the guide, take some extra time in, in understanding the star, the purpose of the star ratings. It's not like one bad, five excellent. Each of those has a um, each of those has a meaning. So one star is that you strongly disagree that the proposal, the proposal meets the impact criteria. Two is I disagree. Three stars is neutral. I neither agree or nor disagree. Four stars is I agree. Five stars is I strongly agree. This is an important thing to take a look at because it will it will help you to consider how to, to give the rating. And it also is what the voters will be thinking about when they um, use these assessments to consider doing their votes. Yes, yes, Jean, it is like one from one to five. So I'll put the score meetings here in the chat, but uh, that we, we gave you the link earlier for the for the um, for the guide itself. When you go through, take a look at this. And to Phil's point here in looking at the challenge settings, it also has a special uh, part of this guide to think about how you're assessing challenge settings. So um, I can't emphasize enough reading the guide. The other thing that the guide has is some examples. So three examples of assessments that were rated as excellent in fund seven. And each of these, that, and that doesn't mean that those assessments um, rated the proposals excellent. It means that the assessments themselves are excellent and you get to see how, how the, the community advisor responded to an excellent, to a, a good proposal and responded to proposals that didn't make, meet the mark. So you really get a sense of 
how that looks in terms of its ultimate outcome, and that will be helpful for you. It's also really important to note that you want this to be new, thoughtful content that is your own, what you write as your assessment. So you don't want assessments that are taken from other places, or you don't want to use the assessment content that is here, or you don't want to use the same, your own same assessment content across these proposals. What we look for in the, community, in the veteran community advisor portion where we're looking at the assessments for their quality is thoughtful consideration of the proposal itself that you are assessing and um, assessment content that speaks to the criteria that is in this guidebook. And we can't emphasize that enough. That is gonna make your time and your work so much more effective, both for you and for the voter and for the proposer. So taking some extra time in the beginning to really pour through this guide is going to put you in a much better position and also really taking the time to look at these uh, folks who've been successful coming before is gonna help you a lot in um, making the most out of uh, this really important week that's coming up. Um. With that, uh, bear in mind your timing as well. So some people take time off to participate with this. Some people will only do a few uh, after work or at the weekend or something. Uh, it's entirely up to you how many you do and how you participate. Um, so be responsible for yourself and 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 how your how your life is is set up to to participate. Um, and remembering one one assessment. Is, is is as good as many because we need we need diverse voices and we need uh, as much input for for the voters and to the proposers. So um, that. I had a quick question. Um, sure. Uh, on average, how long would uh, uh, just as a gauge, how long would one good assessment take? Um, I would hazard, I guess, about half an hour. To an hour, um, that it it depends uh, how much content the um, the proposer has put there. Um, some some will obviously be smaller, and and it depends on the budget. This types of thing, how how detailed someone should go into it. Um, because I, I would I would argue that if someone's asking for two thousand has written um, ten thousand words, that's not a very clear. Uh, um, proposal just as much as a, a hundred thousand proposal with two thousand words. So um, it will all depend. But if you're if you're aiming to do one every hour or, or two every hour or something like that, that that's probably a reasonable number, um, depending on your reading speed and and that sort of stuff. So. Thank you. Karim, you had your hand up earlier. Did your did your question get answered? Um, I think so. It was related to uh, to Nadia's comment about the the, the stars, and uh, I think I think I understood it. Um, I, I was gonna Nadia. I don't know if you have an ex uh, an example in mind of of you know how not to do it. I mean, you know, one to five logically makes sense it's intuitive and i think what you were saying is there's more to it i, I just maybe wasn't too clear on what you mean mm. thank you for that question the my my sentiment is simply um you know sometimes we rate things on a, a scale one to ten or you know we we think like yeah it was pretty good it's like a seven but that's not how the stars work here the stars uh depending on which one that you however you choose to rate it. So take the proposal itself in and then decide how much you think it has accomplished the either the impact feasibility or auditability criteria. And that should be reflected. If you think that they knocked it out of the park, that's five stars, not because it's because five stars is excellent, but because five stars says, I strongly agree that this person has met this criteria. Whereas Three is kind of neutral. Maybe they got some things and not other things, or maybe they're way off the mark and then you disagree, which is one star. So just be consider that as you go through the process, not using it like a like sort of a, a feeler kind of assessment with the stars, but actually understanding what those stars mean within the within the assessment process and uh, approaching it that way. Is that helpful? Yeah, I got you. Thank you. Thank you for that. In many ways, this is uh an interesting experiment because 
up to this fund, so up to fund seven, uh, proposers just had a, a block text that they could write anything they wanted to in that text. Uh, as of fund eight, um, this, the form for submission of a proposal has actually been separated into those three sections. Um, so this is the first time that's happened. Um, so it's going to be interesting to see. In many ways, it's going to, I think it's going to make the CA process easier to undertake because instead of looking for the details, whether they've put them, you can just gauge what they've put there under there against this criteria. So it's going to be very helpful. Um, I'll just point out as well, uh, we also made a voter tool, which is actually designed to help you uh, with voting um, to pick, pick your pick list. And there's actually a shared pick list and all sorts of goodies inside the voter tool. Um, the URLs, I'll share it in the chat. Um, it's, it's actually a bit uh, bigger than just a voter tool because inside it, it um, ha has information um, about whether previous funds were funded or not funded. Um, and it also includes the data about uh, how many reviews were accepted. And if you click on here, it actually opens this out and you can explore uh, the CA reviews for these, uh, for these proposals, as well as the details of um, the QA process of the VCA QA process. So if you want to explore deeper to be a good CA, this is by no means necessary. Uh, just if you do want to go and research more and understand more, you can use this voter tool to dig into. Um, so this was rated good. One out of 21 said it was excellent. 13 said it was good. So um, according to the VCA body, this, uh, the way this was written is good. All right. Um, so if we try and find an excellence, we are talking about adding a, a filter so that people can find. I mean, this person's added a mega amount of information. Whether or not that's useful or not, um, there's there's a seesaw, I guess, right? Deciding on uh, how much information is too much. Um, in some ways, this person has spent could have been con more concise, let's say. But anyway, they were rated good as well by the by the um, body. So uh, if you go through this, you can find some excellence for yourself or read other people's, um, the way they've written, uh, just to get a good understanding of, of the process. No excellence in that case, in, this, um, in the assessments of this proposal. So I've shared the link to that. So you, you can use that tool, you can use the CA tool, um, and you can find stuff directly in Idea Scale. Um, is there any other questions? What's the... Was it supposed to start approximately beginning of next week? Uh, I think it will start on the 19th, maybe. I don't have the exact details of when it starts, but you'll receive an email opening up, there's a, a period between the close of the submission of the proposals um, in order to prepare various um, data structures um, internally. So, but I think that takes a couple of days normally. So I, I think it will start earlier than next week, I think, but it might start next week. Do, do you have any information on that, Nadia? Or is that good to start? I, right now, yes. Right now, it is sort of like uh, I think eighteenth was the. But don't quote me. There's a little bit, you know. It's be, it's better to take to take that little bit extra time in the beginning, make sure everything's lined up, and you'll appreciate that a lot as you come into the assessment assessment period as well. There is actually an official seventeenth. Uh, yeah. It starts officially on the seventeenth. But that includes the the data structure the time. So, yeah, it should probably start fairly soon. Eighteenth uh, or nineteenth will probably be the start of it. Yeah. Okay. Then, if there's no, uh, there's a couple of chats. I'll just check to make sure. Yeah, uh, ask the question. Okay, fantastic. I think I think we got the chats there. Yep. Remember also to have a good time. This is such an important role. It's such a contribution. 
because so much work is being done here to grow this and this part you really uh, as phil said you know you could do some or you could do many some people do it full-time professionally for this week some people get five or ten done and that's good so um yeah there is going to be phil this is going to go on the catalyst school website the recording right yes yes absolutely um, be able to refer back to it there's that Discord server um, in the in the slides. Um, I'll just share the slides again in case anyone missed them earlier. Um, so there's the Catalyst School uh, in those slides on the Discord. You can go there and ask, or there's, I believe, a YouTube channel um, if you look up Catalyst School, but I'm not 100% certain on that. Probably the best thing to do now in the interim is just really sink into the guide and read it. As, and that voter tool is so fantastic. There's, and you can really get a sense of, of uh, what's in there. That should guide you a lot. So it's a good time to prepare. And there's still a uh, very helpful two days here to go in and, or less than two days now, but countdown's happening until the proposal deadline. So if you have some time, you can go in and just start reading proposals. And if you do that, just give them some comments. Comments on proposals, so helpful for proposers and a great way to support um, the process as it moves from proposers proposing to assessors assessing to voters voting. Fantastic. No more questions. I will close the recording. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Bye-bye.